Hello all. When me and my brother Max uh, were playing Transformers, as we still do, um, at, when we were getting into it in like 2019 and 2020, we wanted to encourage our older brother Casey to join us. And Casey has historically been a, a dark side player in Star Wars. Casey likes characters which can steamroll over other characters. Uh, he has a keen awareness for which cards are statistically the best. In Star Wars, um, Decipher did a great job of keying into the thematic idea of the Empire being super strong and then the Scrappy Rebellion having to find other ways to gain victory. As a comparison with cards, um, Darth Vader from Premier Set, like this was the very first series, uh, Deploy for 6 and Forfeit 8, has a Power of 6, Ability of 6. General Solo, from many series later, and you'd expect like a power creep, he is also Deploy 6, Forfeit 8, but has Power 4, Ability 3. Now, game text is important, but both of these characters have good game text, and Darth Vader is clearly the more powerful character. Now, General Solo you may use for other purposes, but we see here a clear example of uh, Decipher choosing to make the dark side overtly, you know, on the surface of things, much stronger. And this is certainly a stellar card. Um, he works in most situations. Um, the only problem is perhaps that there are even better versions of Darth Vader out there, depending on the deck that you want to use. Casey, when we wanted to bring him into Transformers, really hoped that Megatron uh, and the Decepticons would be powerful characters. Um, if you watch the live-action movies, Megatron is a fearsome character, at least in the first two films, who can womp on uh, Optimus. And then in the second movie, he even kills Optimus. In Transformers Animated, all of the Decepticons are, in general, stronger than the Autobots. In Transformers Prime, uh, Megatron is a respected and feared gladiator of old. Um, in that one, Optimus and Megatron really go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but that makes for really excellent television, in general. In this game, I think the thematic inspiration is borrowed much more from uh, Generation 1 in which uh, Megatron is trying to build doomsday devices and master plans, and so he can threaten, but if the Autobots can catch up to him and turn it into a fist fight, Optimus is going to win the battle every day. Fine, fair, but I think Wizards of the Coast went too far. And whatever the reasons were, um, Casey clearly saw the power difference between uh, Optimus and Megatron in the game. So let's take a look here. Um, here's Wave 1, Optimus and Megatron. We have Battlefield Legend and Living Weapon. Both are 13 stars, so they'll cost you the same as starting characters. But Optimus has 6 attack, 14 health, 3 defense. Megatron has 5 attack, 14 health, 2 defense. Ah. Why does a tank have one less armor than the truck? I don't know. But you would think we would counteract that by giving the tank more attack for the same star value. Instead, Optimus also has more attack. Notice something very subtle up here. Leader, truck, melee, leader, tank, ranged. But on this side, Optimus has ranged. This side, Megatron keeps ranged. So this is a small thing, but Optimus gets the best of both worlds. Okay. On this side... 8 attack, 14 health, 2 armor. 7 attack, 14 health, 2 armor. Ouch. Bigger problem. Even bigger problem. Optimus plays actions for you off of the top of your deck when you battle, if you should happen to flip them. Optimus can go out with Thrust on turn 1 without playing any other cards and give you an action right away. When he plays that action, or on any other turn, if he plays an action off of his battle cards flipped. It's an action that doesn't come from your hand. It doesn't reduce your hand size. 
Optimus not only plays an extra action, but provides the extra resources for it. That's incredible, and actions in general in this game are more powerful than upgrades. The, the theoretical advantage of upgrades is that they are permanent and that they can stay on characters, but for that very reason, Wizards of the Coast built in aggressive upgrade removal. Just embarrassing upgrade removal. So, the promised staying power of upgrades usually does not get to happen. Megatron has the ability, this can be upgraded with a weapon in his armor and or utility slots. How many problems are there in that ability? Uh, one, the upgrades have to come from your hand. You have to provide them. Two, the weapons that you play on Megatron are weapons that you are not playing on your other characters. So if you spend three turns and you have three characters on your team and you're trying to build Megatron into a super weapon, you are ignoring your other characters and not letting them be the threats that they need to be. Uh, third, this can be upgraded with a weapon in his armor and or utility slots. Problem is, there are armors and utilities worth playing. Wouldn't this Megatron want an energy pack? Um, wouldn't he benefit from hunker down and grabbing a ghost shield from the discard pile? Uh, yeah. Uh, wave 4 Optimus, who is just on a whole other level. He fixes the problem that Wizards of the Coast made for Megatron here by simply getting around and saying, well, let's just give that Optimus three utility slots. In theory, that's what this Megatron should have had. Uh, Megatron can have three weapon slots. That still wouldn't solve the problem of the fact that he doesn't get extra weapons like off of battle cards flipped, like Optimus gets actions, and the fact that he has to play them turn by turn and take them from your other characters. Ugh. But it would be something. Instead, we have a character who's, who steals all your resources, you have to pour them into him, who is one less attack than Optimus, same health, same armor value, doesn't have a melee on the other side, has one less armor over here, still one less attack, and while we're at it, this Optimus can get you any action you want out of your discard pile. It, theoretically, on average, about half of your deck, 20 upgrades versus 20 actions, let's say. Whereas Megatron doesn't get you any upgrade you want. You can't just fish for, oh, uh, spare parts. <laughs> If you're into that. I like spirit parts. Um, you can't fish for a force field or a bashing shield. I'm not into that. Um, you have to get a weapon. Now, weapons are arguably the most powerful subset of upgrades, but the fact stands you don't have full access to that other half of your deck. You can only grab the weapons. And you know um, from playing this game, if you have, uh, this Optimus just far outperforms this Megatron for all of the reasons we've stated here. Uh, so there was wave one. We also had um, a starter deck Optimus with like Prowl and Bumblebee and Ironhide. Um, we didn't get a Decepticon starter. Later on, we got a starter that included a Megatron and a Starscream, but it was split with Windblade and Bumblebee. I suppose that's the only real criticism we should level here, uh, because this is not a fair comparison, since we can also admit that Bumblebee and Windblade and Starscream in this starter deck were also understated. But if we do look, like 3102 versus 2102, they're both seven stars. Okay, but this guy is bold one. Sure, but that's exactly Optimus's ability on this side. And he has 3102 versus 2102. And if we go to Megatron's, Bot mode abilities, 310-2, 310-1. Ouch. Um, no love for Megatron. We also had some commons in Wave 1. And these are harder to compare because this Optimus is 12 stars and this Megatron is only 10. But, ow, he has 2 attack on 10 stars and only 12 health. That's horrible. To be fair, Optimus only has one armor for 12 stars, and that is not good. But he he can go into two armor on this side, and that's what Megatron goes down to on his bump mode ability. Uh, Optimus also has thematic cohesion. With his bold two and then his repair on this side, he can do a, a decent, you know, like at this point, C tier, D tier, but uh, a thematically cohesive 
orange icon repair deck with say wave one RC and Ratchet uh, because RC will also repair and she'll play aggressive orange cards and you know pierce with as much attack as she does. Optimus makes thematic sense and he's still a better character than this guy. Um, 5, 15, 2, 4, 12, 2. N now again, he's 12 stars and he's 10 stars, but the two attack over here is abysmal. Like, it's just terrible. The point is, when you're attacking with Megatron, you desperately want to be attacking on this side. And yes, 4 is okay, and Pierce 3 is nice. And the theory is that you put on uh, the fusion cannon of Megatron onto him. Let's see if I got a copy over here. And then he's 5 attack and Pierce 6. But it's always bothered me anyways um, that... <laughs> For, for this weapon seeming to be built for this guy, that the attack and the pierce don't match up anyways, and you have to provide some extra form of base attack to catch up to the extra pierce. And what are you going to do? Play a heavy-handed and get two extra attack for four extra pierce and leave pierce on the table yet again? Or are you blending orange and blue together? It's not great. This Megatron is not great. So there's our wave one, guys. Wave two is embarrassing. Here is Megatron Arrogant Ruler. And there's an Optimus in wave two, but he's not meant to be compared to that Optimus because that Sentinel Optimus uh, working with combiners, the comparison would be very strange. No, this Megatron is meant to be compared to this Bumblebee. They have the same abilities, just action upgrade. Uh, he can play an action from your hand, like an extra action when you flip. He can play an extra upgrade when you flip. He attacks, scraps an action to draw two cards. He attacks, scraps an upgrade to draw two cards. But, melee, ranged, ranged, and ranged. Ouch, ouch. Um, range is good, but Bumblebee can do both. Um, why does Bumblebee have five attack compared to Megatron's three? Thematically, that doesn't make sense to me. We have fixed the armor problem from Wave 1, Living Weapon versus Battlefield uh, Legend. Bumblebee has only two armor compared to Megatron's three, but the five attack is good, the three attack is not. And then the six attack on 10 stars is great, and the four attack is just substandard. It's really not that great. Um, it just comes down to the raw stats for these two guys. But if you want one more reason, I will again refer to the idea that not in a vacuum, um, just from gameplay, my experience, my thought, is that actions have an advantage over upgrades. So this Megatron being interested in upgrades um, is not as good as this Bumblebee being interested in actions. And again, six attack versus four, five, and three. Bumblebee has an easy place in a wave two through four aggro orange icon three wide car deck. Uh, he's a leader just like Megatron's a leader so he's a good target for uh, Matrix of Leadership. Um, and then the, the ability to flip him and get an extra action keys off well with uh, start your engines which is untapping cars in the first place. Now Megatron does have access to hunker down which will flip your tanks and play armors. So in theory you can play like a weapon for Megatron you can hunker down and get an armor from your discard pile and then play like a utility from your hand or another armor for someone or a weapon. But for me, it comes down to the fact that Megatron is decidedly weaker on offense than Bumblebee is. Hey. So we get to wave three and then we have a comparison that I don't know if Wizards of the Coast intended to be made. Um... I just wish that it had been an obvious fix, and instead we have a subtle but still demonstrable um, ill-favored comparison between these two characters. Here is General Optimus, here is General Megatron. 11 stars versus 13, so that's what makes the comparison weird. Um, Megatron does have better stats. He has 5, 15, 3 compared to 4, 14, 3. Melee ranged ranged, ranged. I got the best of both worlds there again. Um, 
And then over here, 6142 versus 7152. So yeah, in both modes, Megatron, well, he'll always have the same health value, but in both modes, he has one more attack and one more health. The question is, for two stars, is that is that enough? Well, there's another problem. In this mode, Optimus has bold one, tough one, focus one. His whole goal is when he attacks or when he defends. He's going to flip more oranges when he attacks. He's going to flip more blues when he defends. The focus is going to help him cycle out the cards he doesn't need. So bridging the distance between the 6 base and the 7 base is not difficult for this Optimus. Megatron isn't super interested in his attack value. He's got other things on his mind. Uh, but the gap is closed really quickly. As for our question, is it enough to have one extra attack and one extra health for two extra stars? The answer is a resounding no. And that's because in Wave 4, we have a character for two more stars. This was... This was 11 stars, this one to 13 stars. This goes two more stars to 15. And we don't get one extra attack, one extra health over here to here. We get two extra attack and six extra health. N not from here. This is seven more health and, you know, three more attack. But the point is we went one, one for two stars. Here we go, two, six, six extra health and two extra attack for two more stars. You know, of course, that General Optimus is just absurd. Uh, but it throws the comparison for these two characters into strong relief. Megatron is not as powerful compared to Optimus as he should be. This, not in a vacuum with all things considered, is a more powerful card. And the anecdotal evidence is there to prove it. In PAX Unplugged, the World Championship in 2019, the top two decks on one side of the table was Galaxy Optimus with Skydive and Flame War, and on the other side of the deck was General Optimus Prime with Sentinels, Prowl, and Ironhide. I'm super proud of the fact that Sentinel Ironhide was out there because Ironhide's my favorite character and he represented. That's so cool. These were the top two. Uh, where was General Megatron? I don't know if he was used in any of the PAX Unplugged decks. Maybe. It, it would be cool if he was, and uh, someone knows. Someone has the deck lists out there. But Wave 3 General Optimus was a star. He made a big impact. General Megatron here really did not. And this, this comes down not just to like the poor increase in stats over here, but again to the fact that Optimus is ready to go out of the box. On your first turn, if you've got other characters ready to go, uh, I'm just grabbing someone. <laughs> Hi, Nemesis. Ooh, you're blurry. Um, on my first turn, if I don't play any other cards, I can attack, and Nemesis is going to get the extra bold one from Optimus. And then when Nemesis defends, he's going to get the extra tough one from Optimus. Optimus is ready to do things right from the very beginning. But, having made all these comparisons, this is the Megatron I'm interested in building into. Um, so we'll get to why in a second. But for all of these sad, sad comparisons between Optimus and Megatron, um, Casey definitely had a point. Um, the Decepticons are not scary. They don't compare to the Autobots, certainly in this comparison between Megatron and Optimus, but also in the battle cards department, uh, Press the Advantage was designed to be a mirror to um, Bad Attitude. Press the Advantage was an orange icon with a green that could get you a net of four damage by increasing an Autobot's attack of two and the Decepticon's armor down to two. Bad Attitude was... One damage to all Autobots, one repair off of all Decepticons. That's theoretically okay, but the blank icon just absolutely kills it. And again, PTA has a green icon on top of the orange, so you can fish for it whenever you need it. If their roles had been reversed, maybe there would be an argument, like orange-green on bad attitude. Hey, here's some splashable direct damage for you. 
And then it would make sense for PTA to be a blank icon. Like, yeah, you you substitute the the powerful icons away, but you get an incredible swing on a card. Uh, that's not what happened. Matrix of Leadership, orange and blue, cool utility, gives every other character plus one attack and extra pierce. And then Callous Leadership for Decepticon leaders um, splashes damage around. There are uses for that for sure, but I don't, I don't think it compares to Matrix of Leadership favorably. <clears throat> so to name the problems for Megatron in general, and then they apply to this Megatron too. Here we go. Um, Megatron... One, needs resources out of your hand and turns to play them. He doesn't give you resources on his own. Not in either mode. Um, living Weapon at least fished, you know, upgrades free out of the discard pile. Uh, but uh, I'm not trying to criticize this guy out of hand ahead of time. This is, again, about, like, all the Megatrons. But no, no extra resources for you. No playing upgrades off of the top of your deck like Galaxy Optimus, like Living Weapon. Um, not even a flip ability to play something extra out of your hand, which at least, like, Wave 2 Megatron had, but again, oof. Um, second, the resources that you build into your Megatrons, you're not building into other characters. Um, that's not a problem for this side, because he'll spot the resources on other characters and use them to his advantage, so good. Um... Uh, this side it's a problem. At the start of your turn, if this has three or more upgrades, do one damage to each enemy. So you're trying to build lots of resources into this character again. Third, the reliance on upgrades specifically is true of both modes, and upgrades are subject to ferocious upgrade removal, uh, especially sabotage armaments, because this Megatron is all about the weapons, just like Living Weapon was, and both of them are just... <laughs> absolutely embarrassed when Sabotage Armaments hits the table. So let me just pull that up real quick. Um, where are you hiding? It's my fault. I don't use it enough. Uh, in fact, I try to avoid it at all costs. So <laughs> uh, maybe it's over here. Oh, I'm going to have to find it later. But uh, Sabotage Armaments. Reveal it when someone attacks. You scrap all of their weapons. And... For this guy, he loves attack drones. You're putting three weapons on him. Sabotage armaments comes, hits the table. They're all gone. All the turns that you put into building them, into like fishing for them and uh, playing them perhaps multiple turns, or maybe you got lucky and you had all three and you got to play them in one. Probably not. Um, it's not even a guarantee that on the first cycle through your deck, you're going to be able to grab all three because sometimes you flip two of them in the same attack or defense. And sometimes you need to grab other greens, or maybe your hand is hurting for cards. Well, Sabotage Armaments is not the only upgrade removal in the game. Megatron is that thematic character of, I'm trying to grab all these weapons and build my Doomsday device and become this towering menace. Um, the problem is, the format for this game, 25 stars, especially in Wave 5 with Orange Black and Direct Damage and transferring a damage from Windsweeper, you have Sky Shadow and Quake and Fortress Maximus, who shrink the game down into like five turns or less. Uh, that's an estimate. Um, but <laughs> it's there's not time to build these characters the way you want them to. But I'm stubborn, so I'm trying to build, and I have been trying to build, a general Megatron deck, Wave 3, for somewhere around nine months or so, maybe a year, I don't know. I've been working lots of different iterations of this guy, working through all those different challenges in a Wave 5 world where Fortress Maximus can show up, and this has always been true of one tall characters, but just target Megatron anyways, and you've built a deck that's trying to build resources into him, if in your first two turns, with no time to do anything, he's off the table, you need your other characters able to respond uh, with cards of their own and be able to put in real impact 
So building a team with this guy is something you have to choose very, very carefully. It's super, super difficult. Oh yeah. So that is, that is the problem. Um, for all of these reasons, Megatron did not feel the love from Wizards of the Coast. At the end of the day, even if I have some form of success in building a strong Megatron deck, Casey was still right. Like, Megatron is not the Darth Vader of the Transformers world. Uh, and the work put into building a good deck for him is going to have to uh, be inspired by some other character. Um, he, he's not a Darth Vader. Maybe he's the underdog, if anything else. I'll say one more thing. Um, let's go back to Living Weapon in a second. There was one time uh, me and a friend from the neighborhood played a 50-star format, which is just what it sounds like. Build your deck, but then have 50 stars of characters. Something surprised me. I, I use Living Weapon. I think I use Flame War and Raider Aimless, and then the five Stunticons uh, for the option of going really wide in a blue deck or maybe if we needed to, combining into Menasaur and like having... Uh, a big guy on the table too. Something weird happened. Megatron was a rock star. Um, his ability to flip over and grab weapons, ironically, didn't become about him so much as it became about fueling the other characters on the table with laser cutlasses and piercing blasters. F with Flame War out there protecting everyone with Tough One and a bunch of blue icons in the deck and Motormaster blocking direct damage, Oh, I don't remember what my opponent was using specifically, but the pieces were in play for the characters to last out there and to survive to the second round and then get multiple uses out of their weapons. <clears throat> Megatron 